Hi guys and welcome back to another Ibracorp video. Thanks for coming in and checking out the channel today. If you guys like what we're doing, please think about liking and subscribing and also check out our docs page. You can also support us by signing up on our website, ibracorp.io. Now today we're gonna to be looking at an app called File Browser. A lot of people in our community have been using it, including some of our admins, and I think it's about time we gave it some love. I think you guys really enjoy File Browser. It has some really cool features that we'll go through, but most notably, you can manage all your files remotely anywhere you are in the world with a nice, easy to use interface, the one you're looking at right now. On top of that, you can also share files really easily. So let's say you have one particular file and you wanna share it with a family member or a friend. It makes it really easy. You can create a link, send them the link, they pretty much have like a portal where they see that item that you've shared and they can just download it from there. It can really help cover your back when you need to get a file to someone nice and quick. So if this sounds interesting to you, stick around. Let's just get stuck into it. So guys, welcome back. And today we're looking at file browser. I'm here on the GitHub file browser slash file browser. And they also have a website, filebrowser.org. On here, there's not too much information, just a lot of you know highlights on features, but the big features are all listed on their website, of course. And if you click on that, it'll take you through to this page and it'll show you a whole bunch of stuff that you can follow through. They also have really good documentation, so I recommend you read that if you're interested as well. However, we are also putting up our own documentation that goes along with this video to get you going. So feel free to check that out at docs.ibracorp.io. So here's our documentation. We'll make this public when the video goes live. And if you're following through, we have the two different sets of options for you. So if you're an Unraid user, you can easily follow this. Here's the template that we've selected. And we've also given you the exact options you fill out. But things that you might need to note is we want our custom Docker network. We want a fixed IP address if possible, put that in. And then the path that you want to share files from. Now, if you don't wanna share a top level folder and everything below it, you know, obviously select a folder that you want specifically. You might even have a share called for sharing or file browser. Otherwise, if you want to share your whole top level, you can just share something like MNT if you wish. Uh, just understand the risks in doing so. And if you're happy with that, go ahead and do it. Then you basically just click apply and you'll end up on the install screen that we're going to show you. You've also got the Docker run option. We've given you that here. That comes directly from the website. And we've also written up a Docker Compose version here as well. Doesn't matter which method you decide to go with, you have all those options here ready to go. Now today I'm gonna to show you the Docker Compose option. That's what I've been using as my main. Um, but again, we like to provide you with all those other options, including Unraid as well. So let's just get stuck into it. We'll jump into the install and we'll see what that looks like. Now, as you guys know, we like to use Code Server for a lot of our modification of files. What I'm going to do first is create the directory and a couple of files. And this is because once File Browser starts up, it will try and create a couple of these files. Docker will instead create a folder if you don't have the files present. Uh, and that gives us a little bit of a template, I suppose, that comes from the website. You'll see that, and I'll show you that now. So our first command is to make a directory under our opt location, where that's where I keep my app data. In your case, you might have a different folder. So, slash opt slash file browser. Also note that I'm signed in as root. So if you are not as root, make sure you put sudo at the front. Uh, if you are running as root, that should be fine. So there we go, we've created our directory. Let's go to it now. And now I'm in the folder. Now in this folder, we're gonna create two folders again. I'm gonna create one called database and one called config. And if we just type ls, we can see both of those folders are there. Now go into config. So we'll go cd config. Obviously that folder is empty. Now we're gonna create a file in here and we're gonna type in touch filebrowser.db ls again and we have that file there. Now cd dot dot takes us a level up and then we'll go into cd database. Now in here we're gonna create another file called settings.json and then ls again and we'll see that that's there. Now let's go back up a level and I need to set some permissions. Now you guys might know that you come across issues with permissions. I have a command that I run that just helps me get through permissions issues. Not necessarily always the best practice. If you guys don't feel like you agree with that, don't do it. I'm gonna show you the command now. Now I just ran two commands and I could have changed this in many different ways. There's a whole bunch of ways you can, but basically we're setting the owner to 1000, which is our user ID and group ID. 
for everything under opt and we're changing the permissions to 777 on anything under opt as well. Again, not necessarily the best idea, especially on the top level like that. What I could do is just do it on the folder we just created and below. So file browser and below. In that case, I would just put file browser here and here instead of the star. We also then had to change the permissions back for traffic because I did it on the top level. The permissions for the traffic acme.json need to be 600, otherwise you're gonna have issues. So I then run that command to change it back. Long way around, I know, but I've already got shortcuts for these snippets, so I kind of just run them and it's just second nature. Definitely wouldn't recommend that way. I would do it on the file or folder that you just created instead. Also, the permissions of 777 can be dangerous. Make sure that you know what you're doing when you're applying those permissions. So now we have a folder and we have these files. Let's jump into our file browser, or should I say code server, and see how we can go from here. So here we are in code server. If you guys haven't used code server, we've covered it in a video. It's a really cool app and I highly recommend it, especially for us self hosters. You can expand file browser here and here's the two folders that we created and the files that go along with them. So those files exist, we know they look good and we've got the permissions applied to them. So what we'll do now is run our Docker compose file and make sure that all meets up. But what we can do is in here, under the top level, so let's say under file browser itself, we say new file, we create that docker compose.yml and we paste in our docker compose file. This is all from our documentation by the way. So now all we need to do is we update all of our volumes and anything like that that we need to. If you're not using traffic, make sure you take these out. If you're not using Ophelia with traffic, you can take this line out here. Also realize there's a mistake there, I've just fixed that. So we'll fix that up in the documentation as well. So now we need to make sure the paths are correct. So as you can see, we've changed the volumes to match what we've created. So we have the opt file browser folder. That's the root location. Then we have file browser slash database. And then we have config as well. So that matches the folders that we've created and those files belong in those locations. Now we'll save that. That looks good. We have our custom Docker network here, which is called proxy. And we have our image that's all set up. Now the port it's gonna be using is 8080. If you don't have that port free, obviously don't use it, change it to something else. Um, but we're happy with how it is. So let's go back to our terminal and we'll execute that. So we're in our file browser folder still. So we'll just type in ls and we can see the docker compose file there. So let's bring that up now. Docker compose up hyphen D. And as you can see, 8080 is already taken. So we will have to change that. Let's go back. And I'll just say 8584, doesn't matter. I'm happy with that, click save. Go back to our terminal, we'll just hit up on the keyboard and we'll try pulling it again. And there you go, now it's launched fine. So let's go to the IP address and port locally and see how that looks. Now guys, if you followed up to this point, I did have to correct the volumes here to get that to work. But by the time you're watching this video, the documentation is up to date as well. So don't stress, these volumes will be correct once you're watching this video um, and it's now working. So now let's jump into the UI, like I said earlier, and we'll log in to the application. Whoa, that's a big white screen. Let's just get into this real quick and I'll help you change that right now. So the username and password by default is admin admin. We'll click login. And uh, there we go, we're in the system, guys. We are in the system. Now keep in mind, again, I only shared the root folder of this application. I didn't actually share any other directory and I'm fine with that. So in that folder that we're seeing, we're seeing the config and database. So let's go back to our compost file real quick and you'll see that this is the folder that we've uh, assigned or allocated in there, which is opt file browser slash SRV. I could change this here to slash MNT if I wanted to and we could share a file out that way. Now we're signed in, let's go to settings and I'm gonna help you help your eyes by avoiding the big white light. Big thanks to Disk Duck for this guide, otherwise we'd, be, we'd all be blind. So in settings, go into here, then to go to global settings. And then under branding, you'll see here the theme. Let's go on to dark and click update. Refresh. And there we go. Back to our nice, beautiful, dark theme. That's what we like to see. Now, all of us goblins out there, we obviously like the dark theme. It just helps us uh, read stuff in the dark, especially. But I've pretty much changed everything to dark theme in my life. So I don't know how we lived without it, honestly, not that long ago. Now, one thing you might wanna change is the default password, and you can do that by going to user management here, clicking the pencil, and then setting the password that you'd like to set. Um, you can also prevent user from changing the password from that login screen that we saw. Now, by default, opening folders and files requires a double click. 
If we want to make the file browser behave more like a website and respond to single click, then we can adjust that as well. So all we need to do in that case is again, in the settings that we're in, then go to profile settings. And here you'll see use single clicks to open files and directories. So let's check that. The other thing we can do is set our language. Now, a lot of our community is global around the world. We have community members from all sorts of places in the world. You might want to change your language right here, which is a lovely option from the developers. So a nice touch there. But if we go back to global settings, we can even set the default language all around. So we can say the default language for users is Romanian. I'm not going to do that. Otherwise we might have a problem. So let's leave it as English for now. Another thing you might really enjoy doing is customizing your instance, which is pretty easy to do. So for example, for one, we can change our instance name. So we can say Ibrafile, for example, which is great. Being able to customize our instance really makes it unique for us. And it's going to look great if you're using it for, for example, sending it to a client, you want a client to get a file for you, then you can have your branding on that link. So when they open the link up, it's your branding on there and you simply download the file. Now let's go back to my files here and I'll show you the important parts of managing files and folders, of course. Now on the left, we see two options to create a new folder or file at the location that we're in. So currently we're in the top level of the folder we've mapped to SRV. Now let's go into config and I've created a test file here. If you need to create another file, you can just go new file, give it a name. We'll say test two. It will open up an editor so we can put in whatever we want in here and then we click save and then we exit. And now you can see I've got these two files here. Now let's select a file and then in the top, you'll notice that there are some options at the top as well. If you hover over them, you'll see exactly what they say. We can also upload files. So in this config location, why don't I go ahead and I'll upload a file. So here we go, I've uploaded our Ibracorp favicon. As we can also then download the file, of course, you can just download that however you like. You've then also got all these other options here. Let's say we want to share this, which is the most important thing I think you guys will enjoy. So sharing is interesting because we want to be able to access it remotely. So it goes without saying that this is assuming you've now reverse proxied file browser. And if you don't know how to do that, check out our playlist on reverse proxies. We've covered traffic, we've covered Nginx proxy manager, we've covered swag, a lot of options for you to use and how to use them. But we're gonna assume you've done that now. Now, once you've done that, you're giving the person the full link. Now, how long do you want to share this for? You can set seconds, minutes, hours, or days. We're gonna say eight hours, for example. You can also set an optional password if you wish to help protect that link. Go ahead and click share, and it will give you a hash code right here. It'll also tell you how long is left on that code. Now, if you just copy this, it will give you the link, and then you can go ahead and paste that. And the best way to test that is probably an incognito page. So let's go incognito. And just so you can see the link here, you've got the IP address. In our case, we're using it locally. Again, I assume that you have reverse proxy this. So it would appear as filebrowser.domain.com slash share slash that code. And if we just click on it, this is what people will see on that link. Again, if you have your custom branding, you'll have that here as well. This will tell them the name of the file, when it was last modified, the size, and it will give them the ability to download it. They can also open it and there's a QR code to make it even easier again. So this is really, really cool. I think that's one of the best parts about this, to be perfectly honest. Now you can move files, you can copy files, you can delete files, you can open up a shell, you can um, select multiple stuff. You can even change the view on how you want it to look, which is great. Then if you go into settings, you've got all sorts of share management in here. So we, there's our link that we created. We can go ahead and bin that. If, say, for example, we don't want it anymore. Then you've got more global settings that you can go through, such as the command runner. And these are where you can set commands that are executed in named events. Now, it's a bit advanced, like it says, whether you wanna do that or not is up to you. You can also allow users to sign up and create user home directories when adding new users. Now that's pretty much it, guys. If you were looking for an easy tool to help share links, share files with your family and friends, and you don't wanna rely on some third party, why not check out File Browser? I think it's a pretty cool app. And again, guys, if you want to help support us, please do think about subscribing and hitting the like button. It really helps the channel out and we would really appreciate it. You can also check out our docs page, docs.ibracorp.io for all the latest guides and latest updates to our existing video guides. If you want to help support us financially, please think about becoming a subscriber on our website. All your donations help go straight back into our content and it gives you a fancy little Discord role when you join our Discord.
And we've got some more announcements coming soon regarding Ibra merch. We have some merchandise coming out. I'm currently testing it to make sure it's good quality before I tell you guys too much about it uh, because I wouldn't want you buying anything less than good quality from us. We're also helping out with a project from Techno Tim. So thanks Techno Tim for getting in touch with us about that. We really appreciate being part of your project and it looks like a really fun one. Be sure to check that out over on Twitter if you like 100 Days of Home Lab. Thanks guys, hope you enjoyed that and I can't wait to see you in the next. You've recorded video.